What's up with this? Well, this one was a long, long time coming. I had lots of opportunities to think about it because we've mentioned this one in a lot of episodes on, well, I would wanted to do it, but it was never the right time and never the right moment on the room, the idea, and so on. But actually, look at this. So it's a little darky darky, but that's the radiator, echo pump, so plenty of room now. And it just goes, on the engine. You can't even see the cut anymore because everything is fitting so nice now. So with the right tools, right mindset, be a little patient. You can make everything at the right moment at the right time. So another thing, scribe down of the list and the list is getting shorter and shorter. final coolant lines I was also checking all the connections of the engine on to start to flip it around a little bit but of course I found some things missing over here we've got a starter motor and no cable that needs to go to there so <laughs> another thing on the list to get need to make one or need to order one connector for one fluid line so off to the computer again order part stuff so maybe we can flip the engine around and then one of the most important things to get some light in the dash should be this one Plop. still nothing still no no nothing <laughs> Okay. Not any lamps. Crap. More missing stuff. Well, at least here's something. <laughs> so we're a little bit closer now. <laughs> okay. okay.
Okay, so the Canvas module is in. I think now all the computer should be in that it should be able to work. I got power on the starter switch. The only thing I'm not sure is that it's almost impossible to find in the schedules is what it should turn on for another 12 volt or what we can measure. Not experienced enough yet what to do after this. So let's find out what the next step will be. Okay, it takes tiny steps at a time. So the starter or the ignition switches 12 volt to the main computer. So another step closer. Um, I think in some way there is or we're missing one power supply or maybe one ground. Actually I think it should work but not sure what we're missing. This is a damn shame that we didn't have the complete car to check everything. We now have to figure out step by step and uh, following the wiring diagram to see if we were missing some power supply in the whole chain I guess. Okay, so the adventures of a lifetime I guess. Um, I found some stuff out. I'm not sure how it all is because we get everything in a big puzzle as always. So let me check. So I found something on the internet key. This one is should be the power for these fuses and these fuses especially this one should come from the contact and switch some stuff on but there's no fuse over here mm, not sure if there's something over here in my model but of course I know that there need to be more power on here but there are a lot of stuff missing let me show you maybe I'm getting way into details or I scrap something out of the edit but to make just show everybody <laughs> that we need to figure out what we're missing uh, yeah it's always when you have a complete car you can just get stuff by stuff but we don't have that well I guess now we're getting into the groove with <laughs> searching out what we're missing and finding the right spots okay hopefully now it's getting close to figuring out what I'm missing because I almost know for sure that there's one, just one power supply missing before turning anything on. Well, okay, uh, in the mess, so this one was all hidden in there in the mess. I found my final missing fuse box wire. You got at the fuse box at the front, you got A1 and A2, and I found that on the computer, on the flow schedules. So now we should be. Uh, oh! <laughs> oh shit! What? What? Ah, yes! 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 Check this out! <laughs> We've got lights. Okay, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I was getting a little bit excited right now. Now we can go on with this crazy stuff that we've got over here. Actually, I think now the good stuff is starting because now we can check all the malfunctions. We can slowly remove them and well, next stop for me is or to ask someone uh, who can write out the stuff in the computer that we don't need anymore so we can remove the stuff and we can, well, figure out like a parking brake yeah we'll connect the fire the final things on the braking so it will recognize the brake pedals and stuff so now we can slowly build up and see what the CP safe means and all the other bits so we can turn the engine one time okay now the fun stuff is really starting I'm really getting the flow of all these diagrams and what goes where now so we got another one that's the handbrake I figured out the handbrake, 
checked which wires, then went in, checked the wiring on the connector, and we've got another one. So now off for the rest, so we can hook up the computer on real soon, which we're going to prepare right now. Well, okay, that was a little try to hook it up onto the computer and that's working, it's communicating, we can read it out, we can see all the stuff that we're missing and all the faults of course. With the Christmas tree in the dashboard, it's not so crazy that we got a lot of faults, but that's another thing, same like the wiring loom, we need to work our way backwards or forwards to get them out one by one. So, this is all looking promising, we can go on with removing a lot of wires because, well, in the Mark II there's not so much room to get all the wires to the back and we don't want any wires or any stuff to interfere with the other stuff and we won't, don't want to lose all the room that we've got so we got to get rid of a lot of stuff but first up, I got every crazy plug labeled now at least at the front, not at the back, but there's only a few left in the back that we will need. So that one is easy and will come out from the front to the back from the parts we don't need. And um, yes, what's the plan now? Get the BCDM mounted and the fuse box mounted that we know the lengths from the looms and those two will be the base points from left to right, front to back. So yeah, let's get some stuff done in this episode as well as we're only have been searching the electronics and we're a lot wiser now on the wiring loom for the RS3 and I think we're almost there. Okay, this is my quick little scramble. It will be around there under the dash. try it's some points it's too far away and some points it's a little bit too tight but in general this is going to work so if I imagine that this will all be from steel and we can bend it up and down here and there and we can make a bracket well upwards downwards sideward to somewhere to a point where I can mount it in the right angle under the desk then this is a perfect base point where we can route the lines all next so this is going good. Okay, hopefully this is the final one. So this is my perfectly sitting piece of cardboard. It clicks in all the clicks. Stop bottom and there. So now the thing is where we're going to bend it and what we're going to leave or how tight we're going to make it. So we went from this scribble dibble to well now we've got this. Some things wrong. I'm not there 
yet, but it's not as bad as I thought. <laughs> Welcome to the forest, the forest of cables. Okay, so one thing is really cleaning out, that's this one. So we've got plenty of room over here now, because of the, uh, fuck you, to less lighting, but that's hanging. Now off to the BCM, to get this one up there, I think. Well, I think I've got the plan. That's the fuse box over there, and then the BCM above it over there. Then all the cables will be in that corner. And everything will be nice and tight. Well, that's it. Another week done. And another, well, couple of small progress, I guess. I already designed, which will be in the next episode, a mount for the BCM. So that can go above the fuse box. The fuse box we're going to flip a little bit because <laughs> the mounting was too hard to get. So actually, it's this way now. And I think if I, if I make the mount downwards and when it's hanging up this way then I should be able to mount it way better. So yeah, sometimes the easy solution is the best way. So that's also a bit for the next episode. I'm going to try and stack those both brackets above each other. Maybe we can push them on in one go so we can Put the fuse box and the BCM in one go up on top of the dashboard. Then I can shove the dashboard in and see if the ventilation will still fit. Well, Tuesday night some friends are coming over to help me put it on the laptop and see if we can free or connect the blah 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 box. Uh, to see if we can connect the gateway module, because I think that's the only one that's not originated with all the computers. So we can free the gateway with everything together so we are out of the CP mode. And then we can work our way forward if we can start it nowadays, some days real quick. Boxes with missing cables coming in. The final one is coming in probably Monday for the fuel pump so we can connect the fuel pump as well and then we can think about which fuel pump we're going to use i'm going to discuss that next tuesday as well so i think the next episode will be a lot of progress on maybe even flipping over the engine that it at least will turn over so a lot of well not a lot of building stuff but a lot of progress on all the cable works i thought about starting the conversion for the VR6 stuff and the axles, but uh, I'm so deep down dived into the cables and the electronic that I don't want to mess things together. So that's it for this episode. Maybe a short one, maybe not. That's what we'll see when I'm editing it this Sunday. Well, thank you all for watching. Like and subscribe to the channel. Go buy some merch from me so we can get the flow going in the workshop and well, we can afford doing this and filming it all for you. Well, thank you all for watching. See you in the next episode. Bye.